Joining us once again here on the Rich Eisen Show, one of my favorites from the worldwide leader in sports, Lewis Riddick, back here on the program. How are you, Lewis? What's up, Rich? How you been? I'm fine. Are you any more sold on the Jets? Seeing what's going on, Dalvin Cook is potentially interested in joining. Um, or, or are you still skeptical of the line up front? What do you got for me as we're now yeah. here in August? Yeah, um, until they play games, my concerns remain my concerns, right? And um, I'm probably even more, I don't know, I may be, I don't know if I'm more bullish to use a stock market phrase than most on this team offensively, but I do like the composition of the running back room, the tight ends, wide receivers, the wide receivers that he brought in with him, and, and, you know, with, with um, Allen and Randall, Randall Cobb, Allen Lazard, I mean, Nathaniel Hackett. I mean, I, I like all that familiarity, guys who can help spread the message to the rest of the guys, the young guys who are trying to learn this system. I like Aaron's approach, his attitude. He seems like he's, some, he's someone who wanted to be there this offseason as opposed to last year. I spent some time with Jordan Whitehead just a couple of weeks ago out in Pittsburgh. And on defense, he said, look, man, we're fired up about Aaron being there. And they've got good players all three levels. So I'm good with the squad except for that old line. And it's a legit concern. And, you know, it could derail everything. It could literally derail everything, especially if they can't run the ball at all. They're in second and long all the time. Aaron's running for his life more times than not. You know, this is a team that was 28th, 30th in run block win rate last year, bottom half of the league in pass block win rate, tackles that are suspect, Wayne Brown's old, McKay Beckton can't stay healthy. It's just, you know, at the end of last year, the two teams we covered in the Super Bowl, outside of the quarterbacks, one of the things we talked about was, man, Jason Kelsey is like a dominant center. Lane Johnson is a stud. Jordan Mailata is like, Ridiculous, you know, former rugby player in Kansas City. It's Creed Humphrey. It's, I mean, it's um, Joe Tooney, how good they are and how much Patrick, you know, can just sit in the pot. And there, there's a reason why these teams are good. And, and if, if the Jets don't have that, it could really derail everything. And that's the only thing I'm watching that very closely. I don't care about anything else. I think everything else is going to be fine. It's just that unit. Lewis Riddick here on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, you mentioned Pittsburgh is a spot where you, you know, you were um, uh-huh. physically. Do you think? Um, what? Give me, give me uh, the scenario for the Steelers in twenty twenty three. Give me, g- give me what you got on this one. Yeah, you know what? It was almost a similar situation. Well, okay, the, the offensive line has been a work in progress. For, what, the past three years, um, the past, you know, the two or the two years prior to last year, it was. The combination of Ben Roethlisberger's, you know, skills are diminishing over, you know, coupled with the fact that the offensive line couldn't protect and they were throwing all these wide receiver screens and jet sweeps and stuff because the offensive line stunk. So that's been a work in progress for two years now under Matt Canada. Now they have to transition to being a more vertical team and being more explosive in the pass game and the run game. Don't have Najee Harris running jet sweeps and running toss perimeter run. Have him go downhill, and they have to get the ball downfield to George Pickens and Deontay and Allen Robinson. They have to. Structurally, Kenny can do that. Kenny Pickett can do it. The offensive line should be much better. Now it's going to be it's a combination for me of can Matt Canada get this offense structurally, philosophically pushing the ball down the field and being more explosive. And then can that their offensive line with all the additions they've made, you know, draft Broderick Jones in the first round out of Georgia. You know, they have Isaac Samalu who they get from Philly this year. James Daniel last year from Scott. Can these guys get better than what has looked like a terrible offensive line in, you know, in, in the last couple of years of Ben's uh, tenure there? If they can do that, hmm. they'll be right in the mix in the North. They'll be right in the mix. Because defensively, you know, Mike, Mike's just going to have them. Mike Tom's just going to have them playing at a high level. And they, and they added some nice pieces, especially with Joey Porter Jr. You know, Minka Fitzpatrick's one of my favorites in the league. TJ will be there. He'll be good. They just gave Highsmith an extension. So, again, it's offensively, can they be more explosive? Kenny can't be averaging, Rich, six yards per attempt. That's not going to get – not in the AFC. Not with the, not with the long-range bombers they got in that, in that conference. So, if they can do that, 
then Mike doesn't have to overcoach the team and have to be perfect on everything and make great timely calls all the time just for them to be in it. They can just let their talent kind of compete with everyone else's talent. But if, if philosophically and structurally, offensively, they can't bomb, they can't get you down the field and not have to go seven, eight, nine, ten plays, six, 60 yards, 70 yards all the time, if they can't do that, they'll never be able to compete, even in their own division. They won't be able to compete with Lamar. They won't be able to compete with Joe Burrow. They won't be able to compete in the division with, with the Miamis and Buffaloes and KCs and, and LAs. I mean, these teams are these teams will light you sky high, man. So that's what I'm looking to see offensively with them. Lewis Reddick from ESPN here on the Rich Eisen Show. Let's go to Indianapolis now. Um, let's just say you're, you're Chris Ballard. Uh, you fall in love yeah. with Jonathan Taylor. Who didn't? Who wouldn't? Um, he blossoms into what he blossomed into. Last year was last year. <laughs> we all know what the hell yeah. was going on there last year. Um, and uh, now the kid demands a trade, steps onto the luxury bus, the owner. Clearly that things didn't go very well there. Zach Moss breaks his arm. What is going on through <laughs> through his skull right now, do you think, Lewis? Uh, what's going on through JT's mind? No, in Chris Ballard's mind. Put me in the mind oh, of the right, general right. manager. You said, you said that's right. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Sorry. I was fixated on what you were saying about Jonathan. Yes, sir. Um, if you're if you're Chris Ballard, you're just like, are you bleeping kidding me? That's what's going on in his mind. Like, the one guy who, uh, I mean, obviously, you know, last year Jonathan gets banged up and his ankle and all. So, but Jonathan is by far their best player. He's the best player, the best person. He's an A-plus kid. You know how. I mean, Jonathan Taylor is the salt of the earth, man. Yeah. So now he's hurt, and now he's at odds with the organization and wants to be traded. And he's feeling like, you know, like all the other running backs going, you know, they're just going to use me up, make excuses for why they can't pay me because, I'm, you know, I'm a workhorse anyway, so they're really going to use me up. I'm going to get banged up, and I'm going to be ticked off like every other running back. And you're, if you're Chris Ballard, you're going, look, I, I get the business part, Rich. I, I mean, I always get the business part. You know I get the player part, too. And, and with him right now, all the all the good feeling this offseason of, all right, you're starting new, you get a new office, you got Shane, Syke, and he gets Anthony Richardson. You start having visions of Shane, doing what he did with Jalen, and I can do this here. I've got Michael Pittman. I've got Alec Pierce. I've got Isaiah McKenzie. i got Jelani Woods, who's a stud. I'm going to get this offensive line back on track. We're going to be multiple. Lots of and now my best player is talking about, is worn with us on social media and talking about he wants to get traded. That's how stuff can flip on you so fast. And, all. and if I'm him, and he knows he's in a, he's in a I, don't want, I don't want to say a make or break year, man, but at some point in time, you got to figure – the heat's going to start really coming down on him considering the kind of investments he has made in certain individual players there, the kind of bets that they organizationally have made on certain players that didn't turn out, how weird last year was with Jeff going in there Saturday and being the – I mean, it's just a weird situation. And now here you have another weird situation with your best player. Jonathan Taylor has never been involved in anything controversial in his entire life. I know, and that's why it's so out of character here, Lewis. So do you – Knock on the. the how toxic it is, man. Do you know That's do you, how toxic it's become? But do you knock on the bus door? And again, I, I I don't know the the sense of you know negotiations. But hey, uh, Jim, you once let Andrew Luck walk with twenty five million of your money as a you know a, a retirement gift, even though he left us in the lurch here. Um, right. L- let's let's say uh, I offer Jonathan a two year. Um, extension and it's twelve. Mm. It's twelve million per. It's more than the franchise yeah. tag that's going to be. And yeah. we at least give him that. He saves yeah. face. We we got our best player. Let's go. I again. Yeah. I I I don't know. Like why we're in these positions with running backs who are all A plus people. Saquon, yeah. Josh Jacobs, Austin Eckler. These yeah. guys are spilling their guts out on the field. Henry, yeah. you, you know, know who actually is getting you know paid, what? but. You know what happens, Rich, honestly? Like, and I, I don't say this. You know what's happening? When I, whenever I say something like, like I'm about to say, people go, oh, man, you're just mad. You're sour. You didn't get the job with the Giants. You didn't get the job. This, that's why you're saying this. But this is what happens. General managers, front office people, they really do think that 
it's them all the time. Like I'm, I'm smarter than everyone else. I, I have all the answers with these guys. These guys are just interchangeable commodities, mm. especially when we're talking about running back. Just look, history's on our side. Look at all the guys we can find, second round and lower, free agent types. Look what Brett Beach did with Isaiah Pacheco. Look at what he maybe found this year in undrafted free agent and Eric Prince out of Tulsa. This happened all over the league. These running, but we don't need to. We don't need to. You know, from a business perspective, extend ourselves. But as I've also said, and I, I get that that mentality a little bit. I do because I understand that it's a business, but it's also a business of people. And you're right. You're absolutely right. When you're talking about a guy like Jonathan, that kind of kid in particular, and I know him very well, and that's why I, I will go out and extend myself a little bit more about this one. Mm-hmm. Because he's so damn reliable as a person, as a player, I would be willing to say, hey, you know what? Although my job is to minimize risk to the club, play for a future performance, you know, pay for future performance projections, I'm not going to f- factor in that, you know, the, the kind of wear and tear he has already. I'm not going to factor in the ankle injury or nothing. I'm also going to take into account how we have used this kid already and what he's done for us already. And I'm going to reward him a little bit for that too. And I'm not going to let everything else going on with everyone else in this running back market sway me. I'm not going to listen to, I'm not going to take calls and get on the phone with my other GM buddies or team president buddies or other ownership buddies and go, Hey man, you can you believe what's going on with Jonathan? Like you guys didn't pay so-and-so, but we're going to hold the line too. Cause that, that stuff happens too. I would just say, I would put myself in my room and get with Jonathan and his reps and go, look, unless there's something I don't know, I'd be like, look, I'm going I'm to I'm hook you up. I'm going to take care of you because of what you've meant to this organization, what you mean to this city, what you mean to this franchise, what you mean to your teammates. And what I, I still believe, especially with this new coaching staff, this new quarterback that we have, and the new direction we're going in, I believe there's a lot of good, good carries left in you. I would, I would do that. And I would be the first to say, and I'm going to say it now, my personal feelings would come into play with a kid like this. They would because of how I feel about him. And that's, and you know what? That may burn me. It may be one of those situations where people come back and they, and they roast me like they roast Dallas for paying Ezekiel Elliott and call it one of the worst contract extensions ever, blah, blah. But I wouldn't give a damn. Not with a kid like this. Because like, like we just said, and we agreed upon, Jonathan Taylor has never been involved in anything controversial in his life. And he's tweeting now about the discrepancy, you know, the, the, the difference in stories about his back and all this stuff. For him to do that, you know he's pissed off. Yeah, all right. and he feels like somebody is lying on him and trying to make him look bad. And that is just, look, yeah, it's business, but that's bad business, dude. You do not want kids like that, young men like that, feeling that way about you. Lewis. But, yeah, I, I would do a deal. That maybe hurts me in the wrong one, maybe it doesn't. But you know what? As you just said, it ain't like it ain't been done for done before for other people. So I definitely work for him. Lewis, no R- question. Lewis Riddick of ESPN here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. Okay, the surprise team in the NFC. I want I'd, your best guess. I mean, and I guess the surprise teams. I'll just throw a few out at you. Commanders yeah. finished in last last year. The Bears, as we all know, three and fourteen. The Rams, I got Cooper Cup on the show tomorrow. A lot of folks believe they're toast nope. with all those rookies in yeah, camp. They are. they are toast. You think they are toast? <laughs> yeah. You do, huh? Yeah, I do. Oh, and wow. that's, I'm, I'm not laughing, you know, disrespectfully. They, they, they're they, just so young. They're, I mean, this is what, I mean, this is what happened. I mean, they, they won the Super Bowl. They sold out. They, they, got, they got a trophy. Right. But they're going to have to go through it now. But I know what you're asking about. You know, and I know last time we talked, Seattle was one of my – like right now, yes. Seattle and, and Detroit are my teams right. for this year in the NFC that I think are going to make noise, Okay, major noise. But I'm going to give you a different team Okay, in, in the NFC. I'm going to give you the Washington Commanders. All righty. Okay. Okay. And that's because, one, new ownership group has told – you know how that goes. Oh, yeah? When your bosses and stuff are, are those kind of people and you come into the building and you feel supported – it's positive, all rolling in the same direction, no BS. That 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 pays huge dividends down the road. And maybe you can quantify, maybe you can't, but that's huge. Eric Bieniemy, 
Eric is motivated. I talked to Eric this offseason. I know how he feels about this roster, and he feels offensively and what he can do with it. Okay. The peak, okay. the players, he likes Sam Howell. They have a bevy of running backs. they got great skilled players. They have an improving up-and-coming offensive line, and they have a defense. Was one of the best in the NFL in scoring defense last year, one of the best on third down. They can rush the passer. Got all those first rounders on the defensive line. Drafted Emmanuel Forbes out of Mississippi State, who's the all time leader in pick sixes in college football. Washington obviously always has a black cloud hanging over it because of all the other BS. This team, though, if Sam Howell can take that step and really gel with Eric and the kind of offense he wants to put in, and Eric kind of builds it around him and his strength and, and some of the things he did early in his career at UNC, this team is going to, is going to shock. Because they, they've got talent galore, man. They really do. Okay. That team will shock. And by the way, I love that you put the ownership thing up there first because that is real. I mean, we had Alex Smith on last no year, and he, you know, I know your colleague at ESPN, um, he, 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 what he said uh, kind of, you know, got aggregated, as they say, clanked around saying that, that the ownership, uh, you know, misdeeds absolutely distracted in the locker room. They came in, they, they messed with everybody's minds. Um, and the fact that that's now gone and Ron Rivera is still there and he's as, he's as good as they come, um, uh, th- that does count for a lot. It really, really yeah. does. There's no doubt. Can you imagine in the locker room here at training camp, you want to see Magic Johnson walk in the locker room <laughs> out on the field? Like what that, how that would make you feel? Like you, you feel so damn inspired. Like yeah. you'd be like, "That's Magic freaking Johnson," <laughs> and he's our owner. <laughs> of course, that's going to make everybody feel good. And Josh Harris is Josh Harris is a proven owner. Yeah. NBA proven owner. Yeah. Yeah. Winning time. Okay, very good. Thanks for the call, Lewis. Always appreciate it. Thanks for uh, hitting me uh, hitting the show up today. Look for more of me, basically. No doubt. Take care of yourself. Always love talking ball with Lewis Riddick. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.